Thank you so much, Rashti. Thank you everyone for taking time to join this session. Um, before we go further, um, let me just let you know a little about me. Um, so I'm Aparna Pasi. I'm the um, VP of Professional Services at DQ. Um, I come with 18 plus years of experience. Um, I started my journey with Nokia, um, Finland, and uh, then I moved to Carnegie Mellon University where I had an opportunity to teach an undergrad course as well as work with the, um, you know, the inclusivity and diversity department of the university. And then I also worked with Qatar Foundation, then moved on to Wells Fargo and with DQ for the last six and a half years. Um, I've been privileged to work all in all my career in the field of accessibility. And um, design has always been a, a topic that's close to me. So whenever there's an opportunity for design and accessibility, I jump at it. And that's how we are presenting this session um, to you all around the importance of annotations in designing, right? Um, that's my email address, um, aparna.pasi at the rate deque.com. Um, you can always drop any line if you need to know something, you have anything to say, we are absolutely open for that. And uh, if you need any further information, Srashri is there, Mansa are there, they can help you with any other information that you may need. So with that context set, let's get ahead and uh, understand what we're going to cover in the next 45 minutes. Um, so I'm going into this session with an assumption that we all understand what is accessibility, right? I'm not going to go into basics of um, what is accessibility or you know, um, the WCAG principles or rules because I'm assuming that you all understand accessibility and you've all um, taken up the, you know, the importance or understand the importance of accessibility um, to be part of your product or service. So we will get started with our understanding of accessible design and um, we will also know why we should be moving, you know, or taking or incorporating accessibility right from the design, which is also known as shift left. Um, we will talk about annotating for accessibility reasons around it. And then at the end, we will see how we can do it by using our very own apps for designers tool. All right, this is all I'm going to cover in the next 45 minutes. So before we go further, um, I would want to know um, your comfort around understanding or you know, the elements that are present on a web page. And the reason I'm asking this question is because I would want to know your comfort in knowing what is a button, what is a link, what is a carousel, because these become very important when you get to a stage of annotating, you know, um, and I'm going to tell you those, but the, this is the question I really would want to understand. And then based on your responses, um, I can, you know, tailor make the uh, talk around those aspects. So would you please take a moment um, to just give me your options around, you know, being a beginner, intermediate, expert, or absolutely no idea. And, you, you know, there's no, um, there is no hard and fast rule, but we definitely would like you to participate in this. Strashi, let's give about 30 seconds and then you can let us know the results of what you see. Can we close the polls, Rashti? All right, so as we see, um, I see about 14% uh, beginners. A lot of people are intermediate and uh, intermediate and expert are majority and uh, beginners are there. And then 
pretty few people who do not have an idea. So absolutely a great, um, you know, great audience for our talk. So let's get started on understanding the accessible design. So what we are really looking at is um, the 10,000 foot view at a top speed and seeing how we can incorporate it. Now, um, you all understand what is curb cut effect, right? So basically curb cut is a phenomena um, which is which is designing a feature predominantly for being disability friendly, but that is something that is used by everyone for not the reason which it was meant for. Um, so initially, you know, when the curb cut was in place, it was meant for people who were using wheelchairs, but that usage um, hasn't stopped there, right? If you're a young parent with an infant, you definitely use it for a stroller. If you're a shopper, you can use it for, a, you know, moving your a trolley. Or even if you, you are a person, um, you know, who has a little difficulty in stepping onto a footpath, we can use that as well. So the actual essence of why we had the curb cut was for people with disabilities using wheelchair, but that hasn't really stopped there. Right, it, it expanded. So this is exactly what we want to do with any other design. So for example, if you look at the common examples online, captions, right? You know, whenever I'm commuting, I would love to watch a video. And, um, you know, with the help of Netflix, now I can actually watch all European um, web series as well. That doesn't mean that I know European languages, right? The way I watch them is by using captions. Or if I'm commuting, I'm, you know, between a lot of noise and I'm trying to watch a, a movie or a film, I use captions. But that is not the real intent of captions. The captions were meant for people with hearing disabilities, right? Similarly, strong contrast. It just doesn't help people with low vision, but it also helps us to read the content in a much effective way. Um, again, keyboard navigation, right? A lot of us are power users. When I say power users, we tend to use more keyboard than the mouse. And again, if the keyboard operability, which is meant for mobility users, is also being extended to power users of keyboard. So we've never, uh, you know, the, the reason why we say accessible design is all the more important is because as we think about usability, Right, usability is not an alien topic to designers anymore. Usability is what we they all look for user experience, and you know, um, how do I make it more user friendly? Same way, accessibility needs to be there. How can I make my application more accessible? How can I make it more usable? Because usability and accessibility, though they look or sound familiar, there are two different or parallel paths. They may um, be similar in some aspects, but not they are not one and the same. When you talk about usability, your subset may be people with disabilities, but it is not essential. You're essentially looking at how easy is my application to use. But when you're talking about accessibility, it is always and always people with disabilities, right? So that is the whole secret that we want you to um, take on and keep it with you. Always design, you know, with accessibility in mind, because then you are not just addressing your happy path or average users, but you're extending yourself to the edge cases. And uh, you as a defined, you know, designer is defined by how you take care of those edge cases. And we all, we really want you to be a designer of those edge cases so that your accessibility as well as usability is taken into consideration. Right. With that context of why accessible design or what accessible design, let's understand why we want to, you to move to shift left. Because you are the true enabler of accessibility today. Right. You are the designer and designers we strongly believe are the true enablers of accessibility. Why am I saying that? because you are the ones who decide upon the color contrast, which is the bare minimum. You know, when I started my career, um, accessibility was equals to color contrast, nothing beyond that. You know, if I say accessibility, oh, the color contrast checks. So <laughs> that is the identity of accessibility. And you start that identity when you're designing, uh, when you're defining which is a button, which is a link, right? When you're defining your focus indicators, these are all the things that you have true control on and you can 
enable it. So this is the reason why we believe that designers are the true enablers of accessibility today. When you incorporate accessibility into your design, you pass that on to the developers. And how that is done, we will look at it at a later point in this talk. But when the, when the accessibility is part of your design process, you're basically moving that along or ahead into the path of the development into further into the journey. And that's why we say you are the true enabler. So remember this, you are, you, I mean, we firmly believe that you are the true enablers of accessibility. It is also because accessible design systems can make accessibility implementations easy and efficient. Again, as a developer, I don't have to think whether this is a heading level two, three, or is this a link or a button or what happens when I you know, trigger an, an element. All of that is also part of your design because you have an accessibility design system in place which can be reused. Right, so your color contrast is taken care of. You know your font style for it. You know when to use a H1. You're 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 predominantly defining everything to the developer, so there's really no confusion, and they're efficient in doing what they have to do. Similarly, it is definitely a less investment for organizations because, um, as we all understand, identifying issues at a later stage. You know, accessibility testing can be a norm in your organization. But when I identify an accessibility issue at the end, the cost that I incur to fix is way more than what I can do to fix at an initial stage, right? And our internal research has actually shown us, we did this internal research um, with, with our top 50 fortune clients. And uh, we came to a conclusion that whoever has worked with us in the design, um, you know, at the design level onwards, we're actually getting 67% issues less during their assessment or testing stage, right? So that is a great, great, great saving. It is less investment from your um, from monetary as well as your effort estimates. So, the, you know, um, it, it really saves time. It really saves your investment for organizations. And this is a wonderful quote that we got from uh, one of our customers, Freshworks. Um, Senthil has really said that, you know, we truly believe that we should give this world-class experience to everybody, not just a specific set of customers. By becoming accessibility compliant, we believe that it opens a lot of room for us to grow as a company, grow our products and make the end user's life easier. If you want to learn the entire journey of how Freshworks worked with us and uh, became compliant, then it is there. In the, the link is there, Srashti can pass it on as well. You can read the success story as part of the, uh, how we, they, we could enable them or we could help them in their journey, right? So our end goal at, the, at, the, at this is that try, you know, you've got to incorporate accessibility right from the beginning. So if you see this image that I have on my slide, we're trying to say, when can you start, right? You can start your accessibility journey even at the time of designing UX design, which is basically around you know, personas, you're defining your users, have, uh, have focus on people with disabilities needs. That doesn't mean that you want to have um, you know, disability focused persona because that is not our intent again, right? We want you to be inclusive, but not disability focused, meaning Disability is one of the aspects of the person that is not the person that doesn't define the person, right? Like uh, if I, if, you know, my, I have glasses to which I need to see or when I read, I need those glasses on. That doesn't mean that these glasses define me. They are something that I need, but the glasses should not define my, my, me as a user, right? When you focus on disability, that is exactly what's going to happen. So have that as part of your user needs. You know, my user needs this. So your features will definitely incorporate that as part of your requirements and you will come through the design. But when you only focus on that, you kind of forget everything else that is surrounding it. So start from there, you know, your wide frame is there. You're looking for accessibility concerns and the wide frame, if you want to refine it, refine it so that the end or whatever wireframe you're going to pass on to the developers 
is accessible with respect to color contrast, with respect to link purpose. You know, my links are defined well. My headings are defined well. I've given the images a good text alternative. All of this is done. Then move that accessible wireframe into the product backlog, which is going to be picked up from the sprint backlog. And when you're running the sprint, your accessibility is part of it. Right, your developers are testing for accessibility using um, automation tools like Axe Dev Tools or Axe Core. They're, they're actually using it and um, making sure that there are no accessibility issues. Um, and then you're moving and building an accessibility product, which will get tested, go through the you know this the assistive technology testing, and whatever you're sending out, the shippable product is going to be accessible. So when you have these design, you know, individual design systems or or reusable components which are accessible it becomes all the more easy for you to make your whole product accessible, right so this is how you can think about um, you know moving shift left or having accessibility as part of your concept so in other words what we're really saying is the earlier you can identify accessibility issue the easier it gets for your team to create an inclusive experience. And it begins as early as your design phase. And that is why we want you to be very, very vigilant about accessibility at the design stage. Now, coming on to that um, next stage, why I would really want to know if annotating is part of your already your process, right? Are you annotating it for accessibility already? Um, Strashri, if you can please pass, you know, run the poll and give them 30 seconds to see um, if they're able to answer again, trying to understand where we are uh, with respect to audience and their level of engagement. Thank you for taking the time to fill in. I think um, we can close it. Yes, thank you, Srashti. Okay, again, I see um, I, I see majority of you saying, I, we know the basics, we want to learn more, and then we follow it. Yes, I want to start it. And some of you are not really. So it's absolutely okay. That is the reason why we are here. Uh, we're going to talk about it, and we're going to tell you how you can do or move further into this journey. All right, so annotating for accessibility, the very main topic for our talk today. What does it mean, right? Why should we even annotate? The very first reason that comes to my mind is because you can be consistent over different products. Say you're a product company, you don't only have one product, right? You have many products. And when you have these design systems annotated, it is going to be a consistent experience for both your team as well as your users over different products and that can be you know a link is a link a button is a button and how is that possible when you annotate it to the developers that is the reason why we say it is going to be consistent for your products you you designers and developers will have a common understanding of what you mean to say when you say something Right when it is a H2, when you're saying it's heading level two, they understand it as a heading level two. So there is a common understanding about the elements, about their behavior, about how you want them to be experienced by the users. That common understanding is present between the designer's team and the developer's team. And trust me, this is very, very important because when we design something, we have a vision in our mind, right? We want that experience to be in such a way that we think of, but when it goes into the developer's hand, if this common understanding is not passed on, they would reimagine the entire experience and can redo the, you know, totally redefine the experience, which is not what you as a designer might have thought. So annotating will definitely help you in having that common understanding. It, of course, um, the collaboration between designers and developers will be a delight because you have that common 
uh, the consistency and the understanding that we have discussed before. The documentation is in place for the, you know, as a result of the collaboration. So anyone who is coming in you will benefit from that collaboration and have that common understanding going forward about the, you know, take or taking the next step of developing what you have developed before. Of course, it saves time, right? You don't have to do this every time. And you, you know, when you have this habit of annotating your designs for accessibility, which is passed to the developers, they have all that that needs. And that's going to really save the time to do what you have to do. Now, they've developed something and this is not the way you want. You go back to them and say, oh, this is not what I wanted. This is how I wanted it. So that, you know, reimagining, reinventing doesn't really happen when you have all of these in place. So it definitely saves time. So we have discussed what or why we should shift left. Um, what are the benefits of annotating? All good, but really, how do I go about it, right? Because some of you mentioned, we want to learn more, we want to do more. So this is the whole aspect. So that introduces you to our tool, Acts for Designers. What is Acts for Designers? It is a very old um, tool. It's a, actually, we started this as an experiment and um, it's a, you know, just to benefit because all our products we have at every stage. But we've seen that the designers are the ones who were lacking tools to check for accessibility. And that kind of led to this experiment to see what we can do to help designers move accessibility forward. Because again, we believe that designers are the true enablers of accessibility. So we came up with this free Figma plugin and uh, we really encourage you all to use it and give you give us your valuable feedback. It's a free tool. Um, what all you have to do is, you know, find Acts for Designers in Figma community, install the plugin, and then you will have that Acts for Designers plugin in the uh, plugins menu of the Figma editor. When you open it for the very first time, it will ask you to register and verify your email. Once you do that, you're good to start using it, right? So I'll walk you through what I uh, told you. So it is time for our demo. Let me open my Figma. This is the Figma tool. And this is the Acts for Designers. Where is it? It is present in the plugins, Acts for Designers, right? I've just installed it from the community. Um, once that is installed, I have, I've already logged in. So I'm here and then I can come to, so that these are the features, right? I can scan, auto scan. Um, choose the you know wireframe and then I can auto scan it to find all the accessibility issues that are present. So this entire frame has been tested for what all issues we can check for color contrast and headings in the sense that if the headings are missing in your design, it cannot identify headings. It will tell you that there are no headings. Um, your color contrast checker, right? It just not checks the color contrast, but it also gives you suggestions. Right? So this is the, um, the background and the foreground color. It is passing, failing with 4.33. The re minimum requirement is 4.5, which is also given here. And we suggest these colors for you to fix that issue as well in case you want to take the suggestion. Right, And then we have the text. If you want to test, test each node in a text node, then you can do that as well. And the main a sense of today's talk is around annotations. So this is basically what we want to present to you and show you how you can annotate for accessibility. Now, what I have on my screen in Figma is a free web page, right? Not even a web page, it's a design um, that I could get from the uh, community. And I've chosen that. Now, what can I annotate, right? I can annotate um, a design for specifying landmarks. You know, what are, what are landmarks? Landmarks are those parts of the page which define, you know, which one is a header, which one is a main, which one is a footer. Now, as you all know, header and footer are the components that get repeated over the website. So you definitely want to have the header and footer as probably design components, right? Um, and you're going to define that component once and pass it to the developer. So that can be developed once and called multiple times over different pages. So you can, and we have 
a ton of annotations that you can do. We go with landmarks, we go with headings, links and buttons, list markup, tables, color and sensory, all of these are given here, okay? So when you open the Figma tool, Acts for Designers, and come to the annotations, you can see what you want to do. So for example, I want what I want to do. I want to first specify that this entire region is a header, meaning it's a landmark. So what I do, I go to the landmarks option. I choose this to be the header because I know this is the header and I'm going to add this to the, I can add it to the top, to the right, to the bottom, to the left. And I wanted to add it to the left. Now you might be thinking this is not the header. This is just an icon, right? So absolutely right. So what we do, we extend the, or we can just go here um, to the header, just pick this highlight and I deleted that rectangle saying that this entire thing is a header for me because the image doesn't have the section defined as under one, they're individual pieces. I'm not able to select this entire part. Now this became a header for me, right? And it says header or role of banner, meaning header comes from HTML, role of banner comes from ARIA, which is accessible rich internet application. So you get both the options. You're giving both the options to the developer to decide what they want to do. But you're saying that this is what it is. I need this to be there, right? Now, if I see this, we understand this is a logo, meaning an image and we want it to be active, interactive image. So I go to the images and I choose actionable image and I want it to be placed at the bottom. So I'm going to place it at the bottom. Now I know this can be, how is it? It's a ahref, it's a link with the image alt, right? What I need to do is given here. And then um, you this part is going to be they are links, they're navigational links. So they should be marked as links and they also should have a list markup, right? So I go to links and buttons and I choose anchor tag, which is already chosen. If you see this tick mark here with a circle, this says that this is the chosen one. So I go to the add button and again, I wanted to add it to the bottom. So this defines the ahref or role of link from ARIA. As I said, I also want this to be marked as a list. So what I do, I choose list. I want an unordered list or an ordered list. Definitely, I don't want the members to be seen. So it's an unordered list. So what I do again, I go to here and then add it to the left. So meaning I've got this too now. Now, you might say, well, um, I don't want, again, you can always delete the annotation if you're not, clear on what you want to do and then re-add it if you feel okay this is exactly what I still wanted right so I'm going to say add it to the left right and this way you can also delete the annotations from the Figma screen as well by deleting it now I want I don't want to do that I'll keep it here and uh, this is this particular one is how you can do the um, the annotations for the list and the link markup now coming to this, what are these? These are buttons. So again, I go back to my links and buttons and I choose button and I add it to the bottom. Now I can, you know, this button is an icon, which means I will need an ARIA label as well to be presented so that it is announced by the screen reader user to your, you know, to the actual user. So I'll choose ARIA label and I want it to be added to the top or, okay, let's take that out because it's not clean. I'll add it to the left. Okay, I haven't chosen it to the right. Let's put it to the right. So I have ARIA label, I have roll of button. So I'm specifying all of these nitty gritties to the developer to make sure that they understand what they need to do. Similarly, you can go ahead now say, I have, I, I see this icon might actually fail color contrast. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to you know um, the uh, color and sensory aspect. And I say the contrast ratio needs to be three is to one. And which requirement is it? It is two dot one. So I can choose this stamp and add it to the bottom, right? 
I can also add this one just to make sure that the uh, if you want to you know give additional information you can add it. But my requirement here is that this needs to meet the three is to one contrast ratio. So I'm picking that particular stamp and I'm adding it. Say for example, you have issues around you know color alone, like you're only using color or you're using sensory characteristics, you know, click the right button on the right side of the page, which is an absolutely, um, as a screen reader user, no one would understand because there is no spatial orientation for them. In those cases, you can use the sensory characteristics stamp. So we have really a lot of collection around it, around forms. If you see, this is a largely populated um, annotation group for us. And then we also have associated attributes, right? So you may want to, these are primary that you really want them to have. And these, if you need, you can use them. So, so for example, a form is missing visible label, right? Then you definitely add that this needs a visible label so that the, um, the user, you know, th this is basically at a design level, you should be able to solve this because designers are the ones who design visible labels. When you see the stamp, it also kind of gives you a thought process that I might have missed something. I would want to go back and check it. So again, um, say for example, this is an informative image to me. So I've already marked it as an informative image because I want a good description of this watch come or exposed to you know screen reader users so they understand the product. Now, who's going to give the text alternative for this? content creator team. So you're also defining the roles as per the requirements that you want to have, okay? There are also these, um, you know, widgets where like tabs, accordions, breadcrumbs, carousel. So you actually see all of what is needed under a carousel. You get all the requirements from accessibility for a widget under these annotations. So if you understand what is a carousel, you see it, all you need to do is pick the carousel under the annotations group and choose what you all want to place them and just put them on there, right? Now, as I said, I can always delete all annotations. So it's going to ask delete all annotations or delete selected annotations. If I click delete all, it's a clean slate and it's you know taken away for all the annotations are taken away. You can also read more about carousel accessibility um, so if you click this, it takes you to the page where you can have all the information that is related to what the design pattern is, um, how can we use it, and you know what is it, what is needed, and all of that. In case you want to know more, you have those concepts placed as well, right? So this is the tool that we in-house use. We use it for our deliverables when we work with our clients, and we welcome you to use these this annotation um, so that you would be able to do what we envision that you all do as part of your accessibility experience. Okay, um, if there are any questions, I'll definitely take at the end, but I will now move to our presentation so that I can take it forward. So with, um, with accessibility, I mean, with um, the apps for designers, what you can basically do is you can auto scan um, for all the accessibility issues that we can find automatically. And then you can use annotations tool to annotate your designs to help developers build the way it needs to build. Now, beyond this, what is it that I need to do from accessibility and annotations, right? Um, because, designs go through iterations. We are all in this agile world, right? It is, uh, we have one sprint one, we may add, we may change, but when we pass on the designs, there are certain accessibility centric things that you want to make sure are moving smoothly. Very first one is color and fonts. Always pay attention to the contrast, to the type size, to you know um, size of the font, weight of the font, because things can really get messed up when these things are under or overlooked. Make sure focuses, you know, spacing, custom focus. When there is a model dialogue, you say it specifically that you want the focus to move there, that this is a dialogue annotated so that they understand what is required, right? Tab order. Whenever you're introducing any elements in the design, make sure you're specifying the tab order again, that this is how I want it. Ideally, 
left to right, top to bottom is the good tab order that you want to maintain. Make sure your accessible names and all texts are accurate, are consistent, and are evoked correctly over multiple designs or frames. Okay, these are things that you really want to keep looking while your designs are going through iterations. So next step is definitely make yeah you know your our designs more accessible. Use our expert designers tool. Give us the feedback to make this tool much more stronger and take it forward in your journey of accessibility. Again, it's a free tool. So please um, go ahead, look for it in Figma, install it and try to use and let us know what you really think of, right? Um, some of the resources that we have, we do have the DQ heuristic checklist. We have Cauldron, which is a free accessible design system. So you also get the code for the, those widgets that we have placed there, it's free again, so please use it. Um, we also have something called Empathy Awareness Lab, which is basically, um, you know, we can, we can buy in our teams when they understand the pain of a person with disability. So it's not sympathy, but it is empathy that we want to generate in our teams. And we do have something around that, um, how we can generate empathy within the teams. And then we have certain you know, the videos around panel discussions as well as how you can collaborate and uh, how it works out in DQ. So do watch out for these. And with that, I think I'm open for questions. I will be glad to take any that you have. Upon now, we do have questions uh, in the Q&A okay. section. So one is from Bhaskar. Uh, mm -hmm. Does it have capability to annotate for native apps? Okay, um, Bhaskar, you can use it, but see, um, the basic thing is native apps is a totally different. We don't rely on ARIA for it or HTML for it, right? So we've started with you know web, but we can extend some of the concepts into the native, meaning, um, you know, how it is uh, coded is a little difficult, different because when we talk about web, it is um, uh, image and all, but when it talk about native, that is not the case, right? So the initial design is for web, but we do have uh, in our, our roadmap to get into the native world as well. Great. Uh, Apana, you might want to check the second question on the QA bar. I sure. guess that's a bit technical. Okay, let me do that. Yeah. Um, if it's already coded as a button, so Shiva is asking me this question, if it's already coded as button, then name for that button is fine. Only if it is a custom design button, we generally use role and RDI label. Is there any way to differentiate the custom and native element as well? Um, so Shiva, as I said, um, uh, yeah. Uh, so the, the way, you know, you rightly said, if it is a button, the button is already as a native button, it is part of the name, but when you, don't want it, especially for an image icon kind of a button. You don't want the name to be upfront there, right? Depending on the context, that's when you will use ARIA label so that the search icon itself is uh, clear enough for someone who is able to see, but that may not be clear enough for person with disability. So that's when you use ARIA label. So it completely depends on the developer, on the designer, on the context of the page, when to use native, when to use um, you know, um, custom elements, basically. Great. Thank so you. next we have from Rahama. Let's say main, many of the icon buttons are as SVG element. How is the correct way to annotate those? Because SVG elements may need redundancy of role based on some best practices. Yeah. Um, so Rahma, SVGs are not accessible by default, right? Though they are scalable vector graphics, they are not accessible by default. So what we suggest is you give a role of image and ARIA label to them. That's the only way you, you can expose it. But if it is an inline SVG, you're calling an SVG, then image also might work. But definitely role of image and ARIA label will get that exposed to the screen reader users. Great. Next one is, can the tool annotate form inputs with the autocomplete attribute? This helps us with identify input purpose VCAG 
Yeah. Um, so, Vernon, uh, great question. Uh, when we do the 135 input attributes, we, we have, you see the forms um, annotation family. You do have the stamp for input attribute, but when you're defining that it is a type email, that it is a type date, you're already giving that input, Arya, um, you know, um, or in, in, you know, attribute there, autocomplete attribute to that particular form field. So that way you will be able to kind of address it. Um, we do have a stamp around identifying input purpose, which is talking about that you've got to do this. This is a personal field and you've got to have it on it. So that is as part of the forms um, annotations library. Thank you. And the second one is from Ravi. Is microcopy also part of accessibility? I'm not sure I get the question clearly, Ravi. I might need a little more details around it, please. Ravi, you wanna... Shashi, can you maybe ask or enable Ravi's mic? Are we having him? Ravi, you might want to elaborate the question. Hello. Yeah. Uh, is I'm audible? Yeah, you are Ravi. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's a very uh, interesting sessions with you on the accessibility. And I felt that most of the uh, designers or the organization facing such problems in the product. And uh, uh, you have uh, talked to through about the color contrast. It's a part of the accessibility. And you mm -hmm. also gave a walkthrough about the tool, which is a uh, can solve a bit of problems, but I want it to be understanding that it's the micro copy. So when we say the micro copy, those are the uh, labeling name, buttons name is also part of that accessibility checks. Yeah. So Ravi, again, um, if you see a lot of, um, you know, the annotation families have label and name stamp because um, it is just not for form fields, right? Even your buttons, your active images, they also are applicable under labeling name. So anywhere we felt that this could be part of the requirement, we put the stamp as a secondary. You see the two groups, primary annotations and then associated. So you will find that in the associated section. You can definitely put it in as a label in name stamp, but you may have to take an additional effort to say that what exactly do you want to be the accessible name and that's where i said watch out for the accessible names as a ongoing process because you have to define or you have to work with the content creators to define that accessible name so that your visible name and accessible name are a match yeah thank you thank you ravi Uh, Apana, those are the only questions. So, okay, yeah. great. Uh, we also shared, you know, um, accessibility heuristics guide with you. Shashi might want to reshare it once again. And Shiva Prasad has a comment for you, Apana. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Shiva. Yes, um, I hope you all use this tool. Um, you know, take accessibility to the next level. That is all I really request everyone because we've put in a lot of effort to kind of group all these annotations into a place where you can use. And that is the real differentiator for us because when, when we look at it, um, you don't find all the necessary things at one place and expert designer gives you that. So please do, um, do use it and let us know how you find it. Okay, I see there's one question, I guess, from Kondal. Okay, pointer cancellations and input modalities is something very specific. So um, we, we really haven't covered it, that in the aspect that, because it is a very dev-centric thing, you might want to have it as a, um, you know, a list of requirements, uh, but we will definitely see if we can add this pointer cancellation into the keyboard. If I'm not wrong, I, I have my, team here. Uh, Pavan, isn't it part of keyboard operability? The pointer cancellation uh, in uh, stamp. Could you check that for me, please? I can check it myself. Give me one minute. Yep, it is part of keyboard interaction. Okay, uh, so Kondal, you will find it under keyboard interaction, um, you know, uh, family. But you should be able to explain what it means to your developers. We have the stamp, but you have the documentation as well. 
but you might have to take that effort to um, you know explain it to your developers. Oh no, um, I don't know who asked this question. That is an example that I gave for a sensory characteristic issue, right? When you say top left, right, bottom, that is not an accessible way of understanding. So when you find such kind of content in your design, make sure you're calling out by using the sensory characteristic stamp. That is what I meant. I don't know who asked the question, but I see it in the question and answer. So I, I kind of answered it out. Right. Um, we have one more in the comment section from Tripathi. Whom do you feel mm -hmm. IDP should work on annotations accessibility consultant or someone from the design team? Um, a great question. Uh, and who did you say as this? Tripathi. Okay, Grijesh. Yeah, hi, Grijesh. Um, it all depends on your organization maturity, right? So basically, our intent is that designers should be able to do this as part of their handoff to the developers, or an accessibility lead should be able to do this as a part of handoff to the developers. So this is this really comes in annotations comes in when designers and developers have a handshake, like you know I've done what I have to do. Now you take it. That is when the annotations need to be done. So someone who is good with the technical knowledge as well as accessibility knowledge is the right person to do. And it all depends on how your organization is structured around that. So I would leave it at that point, Girijesh. Thank you. Uh, Jeevan has a question. Is it possible to integrate to in-house design libraries, Essel? So um, Jeevan, if I'm understanding your question, you want to integrate your design um, library into the apps for designers tool? If that is the case, I don't think that is possible. What we have is defined set of um, annotations that you can use on your design library. Shashi, can you give the access to Jeevan? Hey, hi, Aparna. It's a really good question. So my question is like, um, when you are annotating, right? So uh, for example, as Pascal also said, right? Um, uh, we have a um, different component, right? For each time mm -hmm. we know to define the same, for example, I have the button, which is already uh, made accessible in my design library, right? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so is it possible that the call out can be made, for example, if it can be integrated to my library, so um, 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 I can easily pass this information uh, right from my design library, right? So that my annotation will reduce and developers can go and write a visit component, right? Is, is there right. a uh, uh you know, going on in this direction for this tool um so jeevan the way we designed is that you should be able to annotate your design system absolutely right so when you when you say that this is the button in your design system right, right. and that is that is what they're going to use then we would mm -hmm. say use the annotation tool on that particular design system so it is your organization mm -hmm. structure that when you mm -hmm. you know when there is a button in a design frame they will go and pick that design you know annotated design or they'll pick that uh, documentation which you have provided for the design system but we look at the whole page as a you know holistic and we give these stamps right so you don't have to i understand the the repeated work that you're trying to avoid which can be avoided if you are annotating your design system and your developers are trained to pick that design system for an you know annotated design system yeah got it on the on the, on the similar line um uh, uh for example let, let's say uh, you, you explain about accordion fetching from the your library yeah. right so yeah is it, is it the similar thing is defined in my library so in mm -hmm. my in-house design library so mm -hmm. does this tool have option to pick those annotations directly from there no no Oh, it is it is our thing that you can put on your design, but not the other way around. Right, no, the customization is it can solve an organization problem, right? 
yeah but i mean it is your design or your definition of uh, carousel that you want our tool to pick is that right uh, yes so we already defined some uh, yeah. uh, 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 i mean annotations or interactions for the yeah. uh, component yeah. so uh, if that uh, can be fetched from this tool yep yep okay i think that's it from Thank my you. side thanks even <clears throat> All right. Uh, can we use this tool for Adobe XD? Um, in our roadmap, Deepak, not at the moment. We have it for Figma, but I know Adobe acquired Figma, so we, we will look into it. But for now, it's Figma. Great. Any more questions, designers? All right. Let us know if you have any feedback on the webinar or any webinar topics that you're interested to look forward and any inputs on the tools as well. <laughs> Great. Upon you wanna add anything else? No, thank you. Thank you for the time. Um, morning hours are busy, but you all took time to join this webinar and listen to us. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, we look forward for the other sessions. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone.